Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a really long time since I've uploaded a video. Um, if you've watched some of my recent videos, not even really recent, but you know that the mini is gone. Um, so I pretty much had no content to make whatsoever, but what I'm here to do in this video is kind of introduce uh, a renewal of my channel, so to speak, um, hopefully. Um, if you don't know already, I have transitioned from New Jersey where I was, and now I'm in Southern California uh, due to a new set of orders I received uh, some time ago. And with that uh, came new opportunities. So I'm going to reveal to you guys what the channel is going to be about at this point. All right, I don't know if you guys are ready, but there it is. So right here is a 2018 Duke 390. Yes, it's a 390. Uh, it's their smaller displacement bike, uh, mostly used as a beginner bike, so to speak. Um, I'll get into that a little more later, but when I moved here, I actually ended up buying a 2005 uh, Suzuki GSX 750F. It had some carburetor issues, and instead of really looking into that, I decided to sell it. After I sold it, I ended up actually picking up a 2015 Ninja 300, and I rode that for about six months, six, seven months, and I decided that I didn't really feel super comfortable with it on the highway. I mean, it did fine. I actually geared it up a little bit, and I mean, it did the job. I just didn't really care for the passing power on the highway, and... That's how I ended up kind of getting this. I I just did a bunch of research and I knew I was going to bump up just a little bit, you know. I'm not I'm not new to bikes. I've had higher power bikes in the past. I know that if I want to be super comfortable on the highway, I need to get something, you know, like a SV650 or an MT07, um, you know, something like along those lines. Um or, you know, everybody, oh, Hayabusa, Jixxer 1000, blah, 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 Fireblade. I'm not about that life. Um, plus, I knew I wanted to buy the bike in cash. I bought the other bikes in cash. The Ninja, I actually got a sweet deal on. Because um, when I bought it, it had thirty, like 33,000 or 34,000 miles on it. I sold it at 41,000 miles because I ride every day to work. And it's 54 miles round trip. So... I put like six, 7,000 miles on that bike in the six, seven months that I owned it. Um, so it had 41,000 miles when I sold it. The bike was running strong, super reliable, um, but I just wanted a little bit extra power. I knew I still wanted a small bike because of the price point. Um, I knew I could get a newer bike for that price point as well. I didn't have to settle for something that was old per se. So I set myself a budget um, this year. And I sold the Ninja, and so from that money, and then from other money that I had saved, and we got our tax return and so on, me and my wife agreed that we would set aside a certain amount of our tax return for paying off, you know, bills and debts and whatever, and the other portion we would put towards, uh, she's going to go to New Jersey and visit a friend, and I got to purchase this motorcycle. So I ended up getting this bike for um, $3,500 from a dealership and not only just any dealership i got it from the dealership that originally sold it so the bike had one owner he was an older guy uh took really good care of it the first service was done at the same dealership um it only had 2100 miles on it when i picked it up and this was about three or four weeks ago i i can't really remember um it was like really late February, probably like February 28th, maybe I picked it up. Um, but yeah, only 2,100 miles on it. Uh, I've probably only put maybe 300 on it. It's been raining a lot in SoCal. And so like this past week, I didn't really get to ride a lot. This coming week, I'm not going to get to really ride a lot because I mostly only use it for work commuting anyways. Um, but yeah, I got a really good deal on it, uh, for being such a new bike. Um, it still has a factory warranty for another year, so I'm covered there. Uh, I can do most of the maintenance here at my house, so that's not really a big deal. The guy said just to make sure I keep proof of like my oil changes and stuff that I do, keep the receipts from buying the oil, just so if I have any warranty issues, 
with the motor. They can have a leg to stand on when they go to file for those things. So I'm just going to go over the bike really briefly. Um, it does come standard with ABS. You can see the ABS ring on the front wheel there. Um, single disc. It's a dual piston by Bray uh, caliper. So it's by Brembo. It's not like a, you know, pure Brembo, but it's made by Brembo. That's what by Bray means. Um, got the upside down front forks, which is something you don't see a whole lot of in this classification of motorcycle. Um, let's go back towards the front here. It still has the original Metzler Sport Tech M5s with plenty of meat on them. Previous owner did a lot of mods that you'll see as I go around here. So like the front fork slider, I'm not sure why he didn't put the other side on. Maybe he didn't realize all you have to do is take that little uh, bolt there off and the threads are inside there to put it on. So I'm probably gonna have to pick up another one of those just to match up the front. Um, up here in the front, you got the LED headlight. I'll show you guys that when I turn the bike on. Um, he also did the lever guards. And as you can see, there's kind of a little janky mirror here. It works, um, which is kind of strange, <laughs> but it really does work. You can actually see out of it because he did a mirror delete and he put the caps in there. He also did some MZS adjustable levers for both the clutch and the brake. And then the other protector on the other side, going around to the side of the bike. Um, no crash protection as of yet. I'm probably gonna get the crash bars that hook into, I wanna say it hooks here and it kind of swings around, comes under here and then goes back up and attaches like right here or so um, to protect the cases just in case. I've never had an accident on a motorcycle, but you know, it's so new and it's so nice. I really just want to protect it. Um, he did the rear swing arm sliders and fortunately those are on both sides. I picked up the swing arm spools, which I mean, they're just Amazon specials. I'm kind of not happy that the aluminum is already scratching. The, uh, the coating on there is already scratching. And I've only used this stand like a couple of times and I only have it on there right now just to show the bike off. I just clean and lubed the chain and adjusted it. So that'll be ready for my next ride. Um, up here, it has the Yoshimura tail tidy. Still using the factory light. Um, sorry about that, got interrupted. So got the Yoshimura tail tidy in the back. LED tail light. The one thing that's really weird, and I don't know why they did this with the US market, but the blinkers, the front and rear blinkers in like the Indian market and overseas, they're all LED, but over here they're not. So I know people swap them out, but that's just kind of strange. I wish they would have just done it from the get go. Next significant mod we have over here is the Yoshimura Alpha exhaust. It's just a slip on, not a full system. Still have the factory catalytic converter in place. You can see that there. Um, this was already done by the previous owner. So a lot of cost savings there. Like the bike has like so much stuff on it already that I would have done in the first place. So not only did I get a, the bike for a great price for like, cause even a stock one, a used sale, they usually go around 4,000 to 4,500. Um, and new ones are about $5,000, uh, depending on which year you get. And even if I had tried to buy a leftover stock 2019, it would have cost me more than what I picked this one up for. Um, I think that pretty much does it for the mods. So I'll go ahead and show you guys the dash real quick. There's a screen protector on here. I don't know if you can see it that well. The guy put it on upside down. So like it's not lined up the way it's supposed to be. Like this corner right here should have actually been in this corner right here. So it should have been flipped over and put on. I have new ones on the way to correct that. Um, so once those get here from China, unfortunately, it's going to take forever. I'll get that resolved. Um, but here's the TFT dash. Super nice dash. I mean, you can't really ask for more when it comes to a bike like this. At this price point, having a TFT dash like this is just like the cherry on top. Like, you're not going to find this on a, on a bike at this price point um, and at this level of bike. Um, it's pretty rare. I know a lot of the newer bikes come with like LCD dashes or they're kind of hybrid LCD dashes where they have an analog tack but a, a digital for everything else. But um, at this price point, 
TFT, I think the Duke 390 is the only way you're going to get it right now. Um, as you can see on the handlebars here, everything is backlit, which is like crazy. You know, it's, a, it's just another small feature that you don't expect on a small bike. Um, over here, we'll go over the dash a little more. So you can see 2691 miles on there now. Um, if I click up on the panel right here, the quick setting is to go to trip number one, which is what I use for my short trips. I reset this every time I fill up. So I've been averaging about 65 miles per gallon. That's really hit or miss. This thing seems to be really optimistic about what kind of mileage you're actually getting. Um, I've noticed that I'm actually getting closer to like 55 miles per gallon when I actually do the calculation when I fill it up. So this is a little, a little bit on the conservative side. Well, maybe not conservative, so to speak, but it's, it's definitely optimistic. Um, so you can see here it says that I have an estimated range of 142 miles. I've actually noticed that that isn't actually too far off, but this... This is definitely about 10 to 12 miles per gallon optimistic. So I've gone on this trip, I've gone 58 miles. It says I've got about 142 left. Usually the low fuel warning comes on when I hit about 155 to 160 miles. And then I know that I have about a little under a gallon left. And when it hits 0.6 gallons left, that's when your actual uh, refuel light down here will start blinking red telling you hey you need to go fill up at that point i've got about 25 miles left and i need to get to a gas station um, to go through a little bit more of the features i can hit the back button right here and i can go back to the main menu if i hit the set button it's going to bring up this menu and i have the option to go to ktm my ride which is to set up my phone connectivity so as you can see it's actually bluetooth to my phone right now um, and I can control audio and then I can also pair my phone right there. So when I receive a call, it actually shows me the name of the person calling me right here on the screen. This little thing just pops out and it says, Hey, you know, such and such is calling you. Do you want to accept the call? And what you would do is you have your phone paired to this and then you would pair your Bluetooth headset also to it. And you would be able to accept your calls without having to take your hands really away from the controls, you just bring your thumb over and hit set and you answer your call or hit the back arrow to reject it. Um, so that's a really nice feature. I don't have a Bluetooth headset right now. I do plan on getting one in the future. So that'll be nice that I can take care of those things when the time does come. Um, and it's also nice just to see that people are trying to get a hold of me while I'm riding, even though I can't answer the phone call. Um, you can also control your music. So if you're listening to music on your Bluetooth headset, You'll have the ability to skip your songs and change the volume as well, as well as uh, pause it. So that's really cool. Um, features about the TFT. If we go back to the main screen, we have info, which is kind of just the current trips. Um, we're not going to worry about any of that right now. Then you have motorcycle. Um, right here is where you can change your ABS settings. So you can turn your ABS completely off. And if I do that, I hold down the set button. What it's going to do when I release this and I go back is it should tell me well, probably because it's not running right now, but it, what it will tell you is it'll say not legal up here uh, because technically it's illegal in a lot of places to turn the ABS off. Um, road setting is your uh, regular setting. And then you have supermoto mode here. So supermoto mode turns off the ABS to the rear wheel only so that you can kick out the rear end and slide and lock that tire up and do skids, whatever you want to do. Um, I'm not really into that stuff, at least for now. So I usually just leave it in road mode, which is your automatic setting when the bike turns on anyways. And that's going to reset when I turn the bike off and on and as it is. It always defaults to road mode. Um, here we have settings where you can change your favorites. Um, so what you want on your normal screen. Uh, here is your quick selector. So like I said, when I click, my quick selector 1 is the up arrow. Quick selector 2 is the down arrow. So if I go here, I can change what I want in these settings so I can have my audio here it's set to trip one and or I can change it to general info and so on and so forth um, this is just me being able to choose what I want that up arrow to be so go back here go to preferences I have Bluetooth here it's my Bluetooth settings I can turn it on and off the shift light 
Um, so when it lights up, it starts lighting up red at 8,500 RPMs for me, letting me know that I'm getting close to the 10,500 RPM red line. The flash means, hey, you need to shift now or you're gonna hit that, uh, that red line. And you can actually adjust it all the way up to 12,000. Um, I think the reason they put that in there is because there's aftermarket ECUs that actually support this bike being able to rev to 12,000 RPM. So you will have that further adjustability, even though stock, you can only red line at 10,500 RPM. And then you have your shift light, which means that the gear indicator up here got cut off by my phone there. Sorry about that. <laughs> it says I reached the maximum record. Um, for that video. So as I was saying your gear selector is up here or it's going to show you what gear you're in That'll light up uh, red when you're getting ready to hit red line as well Then I can set my clock and date you have your daytime running light uh, Which is the LED in the front that I'm going to show you and then you can change what kind of units you want everything in I leave everything to the US settings. Um, you can change the language here. You can change your service intervals um, Not really going to go into that then you have your extra functions, which is your KTM MyRide application to pair your phone. And then there's a thing for certifications. Don't really know what that's about. Don't really care. So going around to the front of the bike here. Oh yeah, one last mod I forgot to mention was actually the windscreen, the Puig windscreen that he put on there. It's nice for highway trips. So here is that LED headlight. You can see this right here that runs around. That is your LED daytime running light um, that it's referring to. So you can turn that on and off. I'm gonna leave it on, it looks real nice. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start the bike up. It's gonna be really loud in here. The sound is probably not gonna be the best because we're in a closed garage. I just wanna show you guys the headlight real quick. So I need to go ahead and pop this up. So you can see right there, it's saying not legal because I left that ABS in off position. All right, so let's start it up. I don't know if you can hear me, but here's that headlight. Right now it's in the running position because it knows the garage is kind of dark. Normally in the daylight, it only has the bottom two on. So if I come up here to the light switch, there's the high beam, and then there's your flasher. Kill that before I kill myself with fumes. So yeah, there it is, guys. Um, this is going to be my new content for the channel. Um, stay tuned if you want to see some more things. The first couple things I'm probably going to do is like a five things I hate, five things I like, so on and so forth. I don't have a camera set up to moto vlog with as of yet. I'm kind of going to save up for one of those, um, and then we can get into some moto vlogging videos. So if you guys want to see some more content about the Duke 390, go ahead and stay tuned. Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next one.